Good morning. I am Uncle Jimmy in Knoxville, Tennessee at the College Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be here another Sabbath day to worship you. Thank you for keeping us through the week, lead and guide us in the way that you would have us to go and help us help us to open our mind that we may learn and be called attention to some things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of my story is Learning to Live in These Times. You can look at my head and tell I've been here a long time. You can look at the color of my face and tell I've been here some years. Oh, how things have changed. Learning to survive these times. I, my mother, used to would talk to us. And she would tell me, or uh, us, that if I don't tell you these things, you will never know them. Sometimes people have to talk to you, to pull your coat, to get you to understand things. And I'm so thankful of the training that I had. The time you and I live in today, you have choices. I was listening to some friends of mine in Cleveland the other day. They had a home that they kept foster children. The new thing is today, you don't have to make up your bed. You can't tell your kid to make up to bed, so they closed it. We didn't have those kind of choices. But boys and girls and those that are older, learn to obey your parents because any parent that worth their salt would not lead you in the wrong direction. You that are very young, two, three, four, and up, one day, if you keep living, you will get grown. The idea is to teach you how to survive, how to live, after we gone and why we here. Now, first of all, Put God first. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Read your Bible. Do your Bible. Obey your parents. Obey your parents. I was 39 years of age when my mother passed. She was still my mother. I still had the respect. I still had to do what she said. I respected her house. The rule didn't change in 39 years. <laughs> Learn to live in this society the best you can. Let me give you an example. When I was a child, we had chores to do. We had jobs to do around the house. We had to wash the dishes. We had to do what we were told. And your face better not change the expression. You couldn't wrinkle up like this. Oh no. Disrespectful. And it could get you in serious trouble. In 1963, I got a whipping about work. <laughs> I'm 79, it's still working. And I'm six months behind now. Learn to use your hand. Be resourceful because you will need them someday. You will need your hand. Use what you got. Being poor is not a good excuse. Not having is not a good excuse. Let me give you an example. When I went into the army, I was 23 years of age. My sister was coming out of high school. 
She was college age. And I told her, I said, one of us have to go to college. And I said, and it's you. We didn't have any money. I went to Fort Benning, Georgia, and I had an old broken down sewing machine. I sold patches. I got $98 a month. I sent the check to my sister. What the $98 to my sister? And I sold patches, 15 cents a piece. Use what you got. The day will come when you will have to use what you got. Everybody will not be rich. They will never be. And don't think, I'll marry and get a rich husband. That doesn't mean he'll pay the rent. I know what I'm talking about. Learn to use what you got. I learned to sew from watching my mother, but that I couldn't get anybody else to teach me how to do tailoring and how to do all that. You find a way. Go to God. And the more you practice, you got to get better. And whatever it is, use what you got. Sometimes you don't have much, but it can go a long way. I had a problem this week, and I've been searching how to solve it for months on my car though, how to make a light come off when I was out. I had two little screws and I just screwed it up a little bit in the door. I put a hole in there and the light don't come on no more. Use what you got. Don't, don't look for excuses. I don't have, well they didn't give me. You got to make it. You got to learn how to survive these times. Learn to use your hands because you might have to make a living with them someday. I've been doing it all my life. And people calling me every day. I say, I'm six months behind. Well, I want on your list. I got a job. Nobody let me rest, but it's, it's good. I love doing what I'm doing. Find something you love to do that is good. I didn't say doing wrong, not that, but I'm saying learn how to use your hand, learn how to be resourceful, and learn how to live with people, your parents. And think, learn how to get up in the morning. Learn how to get a job, learn how to work. Well, you said how to work? Well, you like around the house. You learn, you'll make mistakes. But let me give you some, a tip. When I came along, they didn't have a cell phone. They have them now. When you get a job, don't go on there fooling with the cell phone because you will get fired. I don't know any employer want you to work, got you working on the clock and you fooling with the, with the, with the, with the cell phone. You will lose your job. Quit. And when you go, boys and girls, and those that are older, looking for a job, don't go at 11.30 like you're going to take the boss out to work. I mean, take the boss out for lunch. Go early in the morning. Dress for the job. Let me give you an example. If you're going for a job, and you're going to be... Uh, doing construction work, cleaning up. You don't go there in a suit and tie. You go ready to work if he tell you that you, that he, you got a job. You got to have a little psyche yourself. You got to use your sense. You don't go like that. Let me give you an example. I came to Knox in 1974. I was looking for a job, laying brick. Friend of mine, he was well taught, well schooled. He told me, he said, Duncan, when you go look for a job, you put your suit and tie on and leather coat. I went looking for a job about 10 times to do some brickwork. I got zero. 
when I put me a regular shirt on, pair of overalls, and a pair of run-over shoes with mortar on them, people came out of the wood want me to work. Your appearance has a lot to do with what people think and how they act. You've got to know that to survive in these times. What's today may not be tomorrow. You might have plenty today and nothing tomorrow. Let's see, you might have plenty of job. The job might go away. You got to know how to do something else. You got to know how to survive. Let me give you an example. I was taught to lay bread, but I can make money sewing, sewing clothes if I have to. I've done it. I can make money doing carpentry. I've done it. I can make money doing plumbing. I've done it. I've done a little, little painting. Learn how to use your hand. You said, well, nobody teach me. That's not a really a good excuse. You got to go ask somebody. I remember a time when I was coming along, you would go work for nothing just to learn. Nobody would give you a job. I said, I'll tell you what. You let me work a half a day, and if you don't like my work, just say get somewhere. They never told me to get somewhere. You hired. You hired. I came to Knoxville. I didn't have a job. I just went and saw some brick masons. They was working. And I looked at them and I looked at them. I said, can I lay a few? They said, yeah, come on up, man. And uh, about 30 minutes, said, hey, we got to give you a job. <laughs> we got to give you a job. Learn how to use what you got. But learn to use your hand. Learn to use your hand. Learn to get a job and keep it. You cannot keep a job going in late every morning. People might not tell you what I'm telling you, but this is a fact. You cannot keep a job like that. You late every morning. You should be on your job 30 minutes before time. Wait. And work when you, when the job stop until it's in. Learn how to survive these times. It's a lot I could tell you. But the reason I'm telling you this, I've seen people lose out because they fail to do these things. And the earlier you learn things in life, the better off you will be. When my grandmother, when I was Coming up, my grandmother used to tell me, one of these days you're going to thank me for this. I thought my grandmother had lost her mind. I didn't tell her that. I thought she lost her mind. But I'm so thankful that I had my mama, my grandmama, my aunt. They had discipline for me. You will do this. You will do this. And if you obey, you had a wonderful life. But don't disobey. My aunt, they died not knowing the things I'm telling you, how I appreciate them. My aunt loved her to death, but I don't know whether she knew it or not. She would, when I was 13 or 14, she would say, Jim, I want you to dig up this yard. Dig up this. She would give me 30 days. Don't come up in there 32 days later. You will be on time. You will do what you told when you told. And that's the way jobs are. If you want to keep them, you have to do what they tell you. And you need, everybody need to learn how to work. When I came along, they didn't have no welfare. If you didn't have it, you were out. They didn't have no, nothing. Everybody worked. We had dogs and cats. Everything in the house had a job. Everything. The cat, he kept the rats away. The dog, as they used to say, he kept the boogermans away. 
Well, in other words, he let you know things were around. We had cows for milk, mules for working, chicken for eggs. Everybody had a job. My grandmother, she didn't work as hard as us, but she would come down, she would leave when she got ready. But we couldn't do that. We had to do it in a speedy amount of time. Boys and girls, I hope I've said something that will help you along the way in life because the things that I just told you, a lot of people will not tell you. They just assume that you know and you'll be losing jobs all your life and not knowing why you lost them. How do I know? A friend of mine said, well, I always do this and I always do that. I said, you always lost your job. He lost all his job. <laughs> he said, I never thought about it like that. But boys and girls, I'm telling you, just try to keep it on. If you're here, one day you'll be here. One day you'll get to where you'll need a job. And that will be real soon. You need a job. And it used to have a saying when I was a child, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. I tested that one time. And when I was doing nothing, I could think all kind of foolishness, all kind. But if you can just be do, be working, keep your mind busy, even now. I exercise my mind every day how to do this. I run into new things every day. And they tell me that helps you mentally. Of course, sometimes they say I'm a little off in the head, but uh, it helps you mentally. Boys and girls, I hope I have told you something that will help you. And from time to time, I will be talking to you because a lot of time you don't hear these things. I would teach you, you should just, from time to time, not have class, just tell us about life. And some of those things I still apply today, what I learned through people just telling me. Learn to listen. Learn to be efficient with your time. Learn to use it wisely. Don't spend your time doing nothing. Just doing nothing. Learn how to do something. Find something you like to do and do it. Use what you got. Use what you got. Use it. I never would have done anything in life if I had to wait to get rich. I don't look forward to being rich. But thus far, I've survived. I got a job. People calling me all the time for a job. But I can't do all of those things. I said, man, I'm six months behind. I want on your list. And they wait, and they wait, and they wait, and they wait. But when you Learn to do things, boys and girls. You tell people the truth, and you do what you tell them. They are not fools. They might not go to church when you go to church. They might not go to church at all. But they are not fools. They understand. But you can't lie to them, take their money, and all those kind of things. you got to tell them the truth, and don't start lying to them. I'm going to hush. I'm going to let you go. Hopefully, with the Lord's will, we'll be back next week and have something to say. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for being here. Hopefully, that I've said something that will help us all, help the young, help the old, to understand and help them survive these times. It's a lot I could say, but I don't have the time. Maybe another time, but not today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.